Saturday night, the Welsh band Manic Street Preachers will take to the stage of the Glastonbury Festival as rock and roll veterans playing much-loved hits, including Design for Life and If You Tolerate This. When they first played Glastonbury 20 years ago, though, it was a very different story. The band were a fast and furious four-piece, with guitarist Richie Edwards just months away from disappearing, never to be seen again. The band carried on as a trio and commercially went from strength to strength. Last year, after two decades of caustic rock and roll, the Manic released an introspective and acoustic album called Rewind the Film. But now they're back with another album called Futurology, which signals yet another departure. When bassist and lyricist Nicky Wire and singer and guitarist James Dean Bradfield came to Front Row, I suggested it was an album that looks forward. It's an ideas-based album. It's full of optimism and the power of any kind of art to transform you and transform your life, which it certainly did for us growing up. And um, whereas Rewind the Film was you know pretty bleak stark intimate and acoustic this album was much more designed for that sense of motion and and uplift and uh, james nicky was here a year or so ago when you released rewind the film and talking about that album which was very acoustic and introverted and he suggested that you were a bit uncomfortable you couldn't wait to plug the guitar back in i find it hard you know i can go for I can go for, you know, three octave uh, kind of vinegary bluster. <laughs> I can go for redemptive bluster, but I find it hard to hold back. You know, I still, I suppose I come from that kind of like rock background where you kind of like I still believe in that kind of like slightly incendiary physical expression. <laughs> A uh, Nikki, cultural, musical history and mythology has always been important to this band, hasn't it? Yeah. And here, I mean, we're looking. Uh, there are references to the, the Russian futurists. Um, yeah. Having a reference, there's a, there's a song named after the poet Mayakovsky. Yeah. The artist Malievich gets a, a look in as well. Yeah. So, so why that period of, of time? It feels like everything was invented then. Sometimes that, for you. you know, yeah. <laughs> that that kind of amazing modernist period. Um, Mary Rich's Black Square in particular, that idea, which is a very punk rock of, like, we're not painting rich people having picnics anymore, it's a black square, you know, it's all about feeling, expression, non-objective art, and the kind of pretension of that, and the, the futurists, and manifestos, and the idea that Europe was kind of unified without knowing it, we had monk you know, sort of invent an expressionism up in Norway, and there you had Die Brücke movement in Berlin, you know, which means the bridge, which is a big part of the album as well. All basically doing the same things, without almost knowing it. Uh, so there's a track, the second track on the album, Walk Me to the Bridge. Which, yeah. I mean, which bridge is that? Well, a lot of people will immediately think of the bridge that takes you from Wales into Indeed. England and, and back again. Yeah, well, we do spend a lot of time crossing bridges <laughs> being in a band, and that one in particular, but this Walk Me to the Bridge is the Orison Bridge, which connects Sweden and Denmark. Ah. which for anyone who's never done it is so spectacular the architecture is there's not many bridges that lift your spirit walk me to the bridge walk me to the bridge so long my faithful friends I don't need this the bridge of the crime series in indeed fact. indeed yeah exactly. written well before <laughs> yeah <laughs> But the gym, well, your song was written before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the lyrics were written about five or six years ago, just after a particularly arduous journey, feeling really low and sort of hovering above the band and thinking, can we live up to the standards we've set? How, are we trapped? Can I ever escape? And the journey across the bridge, by the time then we get to Denmark and play a brilliant show, lifted me out of the... The gloom. And you say there it's about the journey because the, the road is a recurring yes. theme. Uh, the journey, and there's a sense of velocity on this yeah. record. And journey is very specifically in Europe. This is a very Eurocentric album, isn't it? it is. And we get it particularly on that track, uh, Europa get durch mich. <laughs> yes. My German's terrible, but is, th is that Europa <laughs> or mine? through me. Passes through me. That was the first sort of translation I, I came up with. That Well, the original title was Europe Passes Through Me, and I tried to sort of forge that into a German version of it. <laughs> Next 
and just to continue this geography lesson on another track <laughs> next jet to leave moscow there's a yeah. reference to having played in cuba which you did in 2001 you played in fact for fidel castro and you met him after the gig didn't you and, and it seems to be within the lyric um you imagining somebody criticizing you for doing for yeah, having well, played in cuba it's not an imagined <laughs> it's, actually, it's, actually, it's actually that's reportage it's a it's a, it's an every campaign occurrence <laughs> kind of thing because i think rightly so you know when we play former eastern bloc countries we are confronted with our past and people say that you know we see that you almost fetishized kind of like a the hammer and sickle in some of your early kind of works oh so you get these kids who are now embracing yeah. you newfound freedom they exactly. say, what are you doing playing for fidel and um you do kind of feel affronted by your own past and and you feel this criticism and it stings a bit and will you confirm for me a story which i love which is fidel castro's quote uh, which is one of the great rock and roll quotes when you met him after the gig and you said was it too loud for you yeah well he said it was the drums were louder than war they were louder than war. Yeah. What actually happened was, I said, put your earplugs in, it's going to be loud. And he said, you can never be louder than war. Oh, did he? And then, oh, no, after, then afterwards. after the concert, he went, you were louder than war. <laughs> <laughs> thing. But there are elements. We do look back on that. And, you know, sometimes I look at those pictures and I realise we it looks like a scene out of Forrest Gump sometimes, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> well, well, do you regret it? Do you think there I was an element of naivety? I remember there was a press conference in a, a yeah. band oh, when you had... That was the, one of the hardest things I think I've ever had to do in a band that press conference the idea that we we're endorsing uh, castro though was a bit of a misnomer we never expected him to come it was all about the album had quite a lot of cuban references and sort of the underdog you know the kind of american bully and the fact that he turned we go in the dressing room and he's there after the gig was he on the guest list <laughs> <laughs> the, the idea that the next day then you know or the, the last night he invited us to dinner and we said, where's that? Oh, I can't tell you. <laughs> we said, we've got a flight. You went, I can hold the flight. And we got scared. <laughs> so we and just kind of went. <laughs> I remember. That was a few days after. I remember looking out in the crowd and suddenly all the crowd were just looking up to the balcony like sunflowers turning towards the sun. I was like, right. Rather than looking at you on stage. Yeah. I was like, oh, Jesus, it's him. <laughs> kind of thing, you know. So I think we realised we were naive, but I don't think I'd exchange the experience. Nicky, wherever you play around the world, you always have the Welsh flag draped over your, your base amp. I do. Are you a Welsh nationalist? No, I'm not sure, actually. I just, I think um, I'm really com comfortable being Welsh and kind of fully realised um, being Welsh. But when I travel, I feel much like a citizen just of places, not even of the world. It's just, I feel duty bound to try and understand a little of wherever I am. And that's with like a blank perspective, not as, that's just as, as a human being. But you've always been a deeply political band. I mean, you, you wouldn't want to see a referendum on, on Welsh independence. I don't think we're quite ready for it. No, I think referendums are exciting <laughs> you know, yeah. at its basis level. When people ask us about the Scottish question, I just say, well, I'm just excited about the result. Because you don't get many true referendums ever in Britain, you know, so you kind of, um, you know, we're not ready for a referendum. It is really interesting. I certainly don't want to comment from abroad and tell Scottish people what to do. I find that, that would, if I was Scottish, that would just make me go the opposite way. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> And James, next weekend you're back at Glastonbury. The first time you were there, you were, I mean, talk about sending out the wrong messages in Cuba, but uh, <laughs> Jesus. the first time at Glastonbury. Well, let's go there, shall we? Shall we? <laughs> you brought your own lose. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and that set off a, a, bit, a, a war of words with Billy Bragg in particular. That was 99 when we headlined. I thought you were going to go 20 years ago when I said build a bypass. Oh, yes. You, I thought that was the same gig. It wasn't, was it? No, no that I was, was no. there and I heard that. <laughs> they should build a bypass through this hole. Oh, um, yes. Which, that was the most intense gig we've ever done as a band. If you look at it on um, any footage on YouTube, where it is so, we are so cranked, full of absolute hatred. For nothing, really. It's totally just random, ragged intensity. It really is the most hardcore concert I think we've ever done. So you didn't mean it about the bypass? No, it's just, we, I don't know what happened to us on that night. I think we've always reacted badly when we've when we feel as if we've got to be co-opted into the spirit of something. Um, and yes. whether that be political, and whether it be cultural, you know, because as a band, you know, we started out amidst the Manchester thing, and then we went through Seattle, then Britpop, then the Noughties. We've never been part of anything. So whenever we're felt as if we've co-opted to reach out and touch this indelible spirit or something, we, we react quite badly. We slap it instead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, but we've grown older and we're looking forward to it, to say the least. The toilet thing I just thought was genuinely funny and I've talked to Billy a lot since and, you know... Uh, Has he forgiven you? Know. you? Oh, he is. Yeah, he was just wrong, but it's kind of... It's cool. <laughs> 
James Dean Bradfield and Nicky Wire on stage at Glastonbury next Saturday night. Uh, the uh, Manic Street Preacher's new album, Futurology, is out on the 7th of June.